for a paragraph. An afro? Okay. Second, Truth uses an afro to emphasize that she is also a woman, but she doesn't get treated as well as white women. We talked about topic sentences and paragraphs. The topic sentence must include three parts. Can anybody remind me what those three parts are for the topic sentence? Larry. Very good. Speaker, device, and purpose. Rissy has them. So let's see how. Truth, that's her speaker. Anaphora, that's her device. Emphasize that she is a woman, but she doesn't get treated as well as white women. That does directly relate to her purpose about the whole sexism slash racism issue. So yes, Rissy said, She's using this device to accomplish this purpose. Good. Throughout her spur speech, she says, and change that to she asks, ain't I a woman? Truth asks this question to really show the audience that she isn't much different from white women. So change that to different from white women. But she doesn't get treated the same. Later on in the speech, Truth says that again. Truth asks that again. She repeats this question to emphasize that she is also a woman, so she should get the same rights and be treated the same as white women. Change this to white women. E.M. Good. Change this to question. Good. Okay. She's doing really well, and here's why. Here's the topic sentence. An example and an explanation, an example and an explanation. Her examples are really simple. It's the same sentence over, same question over. She asks, ain't I a woman? Truth asks this question to really show the audience that she isn't much different from white women, but she doesn't get treated the same. Okay, that's why she does it. Equal treatment. She is a woman. She deserves that same sort of consideration. Later in the speech, Transition to her second example. Truth asks that again. Her second example is just saying she asks it again. She repeats this question to emphasize that she is also a woman, so that she should get the same rights and be treated the same as white women. What's the impact of repetition? Why repeat it? Write a sentence at the end saying that the repetition of the question makes it stand out and forces the listeners to think about it more. And she's done. Sydney, uh, would you like me to work on an Afra or feel the pity? Second, Clinton makes people feel pity for the women who are abused and are unable to get good jobs because of their gender. Um, you've got the speaker and the device but not necessarily the purpose. Why is she doing that? Um, okay, um, to, at the end, you can type to solicit, solicit and ask for, to solicit the audience's help. To solicit the audience's help. Computer's having fun. All right. I'm sure she's typing. I'm sure she's typed. It'll come up in a moment. I'll continue. She has all three parts. She has a speaker, device, a purpose, a deal. She says in the middle of her speech they're being forced into prostit prostitution. Um, she uses to show the fact. It's okay. <laughs> show the fact that women cannot get good jobs, so they're forced to find other forms of employment. What is your device? Okay, everybody pay attention to this because this is the weakness I saw in about four speeches the last class period. Same weakness over and over again. I saw everybody doing everything right except this one thing. Everybody doing everything right again except this one thing. This is her, this is Sydney's explanation. I don't see the word pity or sympathy or anything like that in there. You have a topic sentence, then you have an example, then you have an explanation. 
the explanation should have something to do with pity. They are being forced into prostitution, back to cannot get good, good jobs, they're forced to find other forms of employment. This explanation fills the audience. Just something as simple as that. Right after employment. This explanation builds pity in the audience. Later, she states, women who are raising children on the minimum wage, women who can't afford health care or child care. Clinton says this to describe how women are not being able to get good jobs affects their children and tells how they are unable to afford health care. The statements made in the speech create a sense of pity for the mystery of women around the world. Sydney, what does this What does that do? So you're repeating what she said, right? So you're not yet talking about pity, you're just repeating what she said? Basically? Take a look at this. What does that do? You see your pattern? You give a quotation from Clinton and then you put it in your own words. You're giving quotes, quotations and paraphrase. And when you do that, it's fine. That's fine, but in, it's making you miss the actual explanation. The explanation is where you tell me how that develops pity. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're getting into a habit where you quote and then repeat the quote, and then you move on to the next quote and you repeat the next quote, but you're never explaining how these quotes develop pity. So in the explanation, I'd like to see how the quote develops pity. Make sense? Okay. Wow. So no. You can do it. All right, let's talk about Rami's for a moment. Let's look at his first paragraph because uh, it seems a little bit short, and it is because there are a couple pieces that are missing. First, Dobbs uses anecdotes by telling stories about his childhood and his college life. What's missing in the topic sentence? Oh, oh no, that would be up here. We've got the title, Alex. So actually, if we repeat the title every time, it would be a little bit redundant. So. We're talking about the topic sentence here. Topic sentences have three parts. Which is missing. Perfect. So Rami, why is he telling anecdotes? What does it do? Why would he tell stories? I like that. What's the purpose of building a personal relationship with his audience? Well, 
before they see what he did as realistic. Right? If I look at Steve Jobs, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. But if he starts telling stories about his life, hey, I'm a regular guy, the graduates are there saying, hey, I can do that too. The anecdotes make it more personal and make his message more realistic. Like, everybody can do that. Look at what Rami's got. He's, he has pieces of it perfectly, but they're holes. First, Job uses anecdotes by telling stories about his childhood and college life. He identifies Job and the device really clearly. He begins with telling the story of his unwed college student's mother and how Jobs was put up for adoption. He summarizes his example just fine. Later, he talks about a calligraphy class he attended that he enjoyed and, that he, and then had passion for. Jobs learned how to use serif typefaces. Again, he gives a second example. There's just no explanation of what the purpose of that device is. No explanation of why he uses anecdotes. And that's what needs to happen. So good kind of framework for a paragraph, just insert the purpose. And what Mansoor said was, was perfect. So I try to throw that in. I'm going to stop this because my microphone's just about out of juice anyway. <laughs>